All right. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Productivity Show. My name is Brooks. I'm the co-host of The Productivity Show and help do operations and systems and all sorts of content and all sorts of different things at Asian Efficiency. And very, very excited to have with me, Marmel. Welcome, Marmel. How's it going? Hey, Brooks. I'm doing good. So glad to be back. Yeah, glad to have you back. It's always, always, always fun to have Marmel on the show. For those who don't know, Marmel is the also aware. <laughs> Marmel and I are like the uh, the wearers of very many hats in the company. Uh, officially, Marmel is the Scrum Master, but she does pretty much everything. So, uh, really excited, Marmel, that you're able to take some time out of your busy schedule to join us on the podcast. So, we are going to be talking about how to decompress. So this, this episode is going to be an oasis in the, uh, in the busy pace of all of, our, uh, all of our work life, all of our home life. We're going to talk about some ways that you can de decompress and recharge, get back to doing your best work. And before we get into that, though, we always start each podcast episode with our top three resources. So these are three things we're loving lately, three things that are making us more productive or that people we work with or in the community are loving. Uh, so I, since I'm the one who organized the list, I will uh, jump right into it. And so for our number one pick is something I actually literally ordered today, <laughs> Just before recording, I realized I needed to order mine for next year. And that is the New Year, spelled N-E-U-Y-E-A-R, New Year Monday First Calendar. So this is a big 12-month calendar that you can put on your wall, on the back of a door. Uh, it has room for you to see your entire year at a glance. There's a paper version, a dry erase version. I like the dry erase version because you can erase things and change them, but some people like to save some money and get the paper version. Uh, and yeah, I'm a big fan of it. And like I said, I just ordered mine today. You can get ones that start on Sunday. You can get ones on start on Monday, all sorts of different variations. Uh, and there'll be links to everything that we talk about in the show notes at theproductivityshow.com forward slash 331. So that's number one, the New Year calendar. Number two is an app called Little Snitch, <laughs> which is kind of a funny name for an app. Unfortunately, this one's Mac only. Um, the closest Windows alternative I was able to find is called Glasswire. Uh, so we'll make sure to have a link to that in the show notes as well. What this does is, you know, most computers have some sort of fire firewall and that's great. That's really handy. What Little Snitch does is it keeps an eye on your network traffic and it can block things uh, uh, that maybe shouldn't be accessing the network. It, you can control what accesses your network, what accesses your internet, and what doesn't. Uh, it can be very, very interesting to see how many apps these days are phoning home. Uh, so even if you have something that you think to yourself, I can't imagine any reason why this would need to connect to the internet. Uh, it's surprising how many of them do these days. So if you want, you can turn that off also can protect your network as well. So Matt from our dojo uh, recommended that. And the third one is one that I personally have not used, but Sherby on the Asian Efficiency team, uh, she added this to this list. She's a big fan of this one, and it's called the OutXE, so O-U-T-X-E Power Bank. And it's a wireless, waterproof, solar power bank with a flashlight and a micro USB. So what she uses it for is she keeps it in her emergency backpack. So if there's any situation where she needs to evacuate, uh, she's got that there. So if you're somebody who has a bug out bag or all the different terms for those types of bags, uh, you can buy one of those and throw it in there. And then you don't have to worry about charging it. It can use solar. So there you go. Those are our top three resources. So Marmel, are you ready to take a deep breath? Are you ready to decompress? <laughs> are you, are you yeah. feeling chilled out? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I actually love this topic. Uh, great. So, so, what, so Rob, in, uh, we record these episodes live with our Dojo members and our TPS Plus members. That's our premium version of the podcast. And uh, we do a live stream where people can record, uh, watch, uh, participate live. And Rob asks, what's the AE definition of decompress? So what is the, what, when we say how to decompress, what are we talking about? So here's what we mean. This episode is going to be for people who want to just decompress, relax, relieve stress, but maybe you're not sure where to start. Like you, you feel wound up, you feel frenzied, but you're just not sure how to, how to get more relaxed, get, just get a little bit more kind of margin back in, in your life and, and just uh, have, a, have a little bit of a break. Um, 
sometimes people want or do that from time to time. They decompress from time to time, but they want to be more consistent. So we're going to be talking about that as well. And then uh, even if you're already a, a super chill dude <laughs> or a super chill woman, uh, people tend to to say that I'm a little, maybe a little too decompressed, maybe a little too chill sometimes. <laughs> uh, even if you're somebody who has no problem decompressing, uh, we'll still uh, give you some techniques uh, and things you might not have thought of or ways you can help others decompress if maybe you are somebody who is, is pretty uh, decompressed but uh, you know somebody who's not. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So Marmel. Why is it important to like? Why are we even doing this episode? Why? Why is it important? Why, for, in your opinion, anyway? Uh, why is it important to decompress, to relax, uh, to kind of like take a little break? Uh, and what happens if you don't do that? Um, basically, for example, we talk when we work. You know, it's normal to feel very stressed, and when we're stressed, we actually feel it physically, like um, in our body. I'm not sure if you notice it, but when you're like when you're working uh, eight hours a day, like when when we're working through a new product launch, right? We always say, okay, it's going to be a very very full sprint uh, or full sprints for the next um, for the next month or two, right? And when you are when you get stressed, you actually feel it on your shoulders, like like when they say like you have the entire world on your shoulders. That uh, for some stress feels that way, so it feels you know very heavy heavy. That's why we just need to decompress and, and, you know, let it go, right? Um, if we don't, you know, there's a possibility that you'll get burned out, right? You tend to not be productive uh, anymore because, you know, everything is just too stressful. Like, um, it, you can get very small triggers and then you're already very, very grumpy. So in the long term, you can be productive if you don't take time for yourself to decompress, you know, it's just not, uh, just not possible. That's why you hear people say, oh, I just got, got burnt out and I just had to stop, you know? Um, so we do experience stress, stress from time to time. Um, and there are days that would test our patients and we feel very drained. And when we feel that we can no longer move forward, we're stuck, we're stuck somewhere and we're no longer productive. So if you want to be productive, if we, if we want to continue to be productive, then we have to acknowledge that we need to take a break. We need to decompress. Have you yeah. ever felt that you were stressed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have, yes. <laughs> uh, and it's funny, like uh, uh, recently we, we just released episode 326, uh, TPS 326, which is called How to Turn Your Mood Around in 10 Minutes or Less. And uh, one of our dojo members replied, uh, I totally, totally needed this episode today as I was exceptionally cranky. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, that is definitely something that... Uh, the team, the team definitely knows you don't want to, you don't want a grumpy Brooks, you don't want a grumpy Tan, you don't want a grumpy Marmel. Uh, so you are, if you're not going to decompress, you know, a lot of us think that we're we're Superman or Superwoman. You know, we can just go, we can just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep achieving, achieving, achieving. We can like hashtag crush it. Uh, we can we can do all this stuff, and some of us can go longer than others, but none of us can go forever. It, for in all cases. Uh, eventually, you're, like you said, your productivity is going to drain. Uh, you gave a great example of how sometimes we 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 uh, have sprints at AE and sprints, you know, working on the productivity show, and there's sometimes we have them heavier than others. Uh, and one thing we've learned over time is that if you're going to have a, a super heavy sprint where we have like a lot of uh, 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 more work in some packed into some sprints than others, and by, for us, a sprint is a two-week period. If we're going to have a heavy sprint or a couple heavy sprints in a row, we always dial it down and have like a few lighter, at least one, sometimes more lighter ones to recover. Because we found if you don't do that, then mistakes start happening, uh, and you know you're, you you start not accomplishing your entire sprint because you know nobody can go hard forever. We've talked a number of times about the T framework on the podcast. Uh, the most recently, we dug into it in TPS 275. Uh, so check that out for our kind of like T framework uh, refresher. But uh, when we talk about the T framework, there's three drivers for productivity. There's time, energy, 
Uh, so time is when you feel like you don't have enough time to get everything done. Energy, when you have time to do what you need to do and you even know what you need to do, but you just can't bring yourself to do it, that's energy. And number three is attention. When you feel fine, when you have time, but you just can't get focused. So that's what we call the T framework. And this ability to decompress really ties in strongly with energy. Uh, if you don't have enough energy, it actually almost doesn't matter how good you are at time management. You may have read all the books. <laughs> you may have a perfectly focused, blocked out calendar. Uh, uh, you may have done everything right, everything that the productivity gurus say you should do, but if you don't have the energy, you're still not going to accomplish what you want to accomplish. So uh, that's why we want to talk about decompressing because we want to help you maintain that energy part of the T framework. All right. Marmel, are you ready for our five ways to decompress? Yes, I am ready. By the way, um, all right, we'll, we'll get right into that. By the way, one thing I want to uh, kind of loop back to what, to what we said earlier. Um, for some people, they conceive decom decompressing as just taking a break or going on a vacation. Like I think everybody intuitively knows that you, uh, you do need to take breaks sometimes. Uh, but decompressing doesn't necessarily have to be taking a full on break. You know, sometimes we're too, we're just like literally too busy to take a, a full break. Sometimes we're just too busy to take, uh, you know, the advice is you should always, uh, you know, take some time off and stuff like that. Sometimes we're not able to, maybe we don't have the family situation that lets us, we don't have a work situation that lets us. Sometimes we don't have control over our schedule or we have these other obligations. Uh, so, you know, it would be great to say, Hey, you should be able, you should take a week off when you get stressed or a couple of days off. But for some of that that's not really possible but you can still decompress there there's different levels of of decompressing when we talk about that it's you could be like just grabbing little moments throughout the day to decompress and recharge uh, it could be taking a longer a longer period of time but maybe mixing work and and rest or work and play so you're still working but you're maybe trading off and sometimes it's like a total disconnection disconnection that's like the the ultimate <laughs> the ultimate uh, decompressing is when you totally unplug so there's different levels it's not just taking a break or going on vacation and uh, I want to mention that because number one is really not anything specifically to do with taking a break at all. Uh, so of our five ways to decompress, way number one is to pick a new hobby or an activity. Have something other than what, you, your, what we consider work, something new to try uh, to decompress. And so Marmel, why, do, why don't you tell us about why having a new hobby or an activity, something, something different, why that helps you decompress? Um, picking a new hobby or activity actually helps relieve stress. For example, painting, right? Or even if you do the paint by paint by numbers, as long as it's not related to what you do, you know, at work, not related to any um, to any you know projects at work, or even personal uh, personal projects for for your business or or such. So it's a creative outlet as well and it's something that you're doing you know for yourself for uh for example you know um it could be a, a hobby there was a time when you know the coloring books for adults was very popular i forgot <laughs> that what the term was like all of my friends had that and they were like okay this is my way to relieve stress and not think about work so basically picking a new hobby or activity is a way for you to just you know let it go not think about work and just Clearing, clearing your mind. When you clear your mind by not thinking about, about work and stressing yourself out thinking about work, you know, you, you, you tend to um, be more receptive when it comes to uh, creative ideas. So you're like, like a sponge. Yeah, the coloring books, <laughs> that is actually a great example. Uh, and you're right, there was this period of time where everybody had them, like my wife bought these expensive ones, some really expensive uh, 
pencil crayons. They're up in our bedroom somewhere. I don't think she's touched them for about two years. But yeah, there was that period where everyone was doing it. Actually, it's, it's funny you bring that up too, because two episodes ago in uh, TPS 329, uh, I had a, Amy Payne on, who's a professional organizer and productivity consultant. Uh, and we met at a conference for the National uh, Association of Product, Productivity and Organizing, uh, which is a, a conference I've attended a number of times. And the last time I went was in Pittsburgh and they had a whole section of the conference set aside with these big tables with uh, these coloring books for people. You know, if you just get too frenzied at the conference, you can just go over there and just color for a while and decompress. And yeah, that's a, you know, doing that sort of thing is a great example uh, of how you can decompress. This is actually something I'm personally struggling with a lot. Uh, I know I need a non-technology hobby. Whenever I start a new hobby, it tends to be something tech related. Uh, so uh, it hasn't really happened yet. I haven't found that that thing, unless you count uh, going to kids soccer and helping with the team with that. Uh, maybe that would be my hobby, I guess. But it, yeah, when I'm when I'm doing kids soccer stuff, it's definitely a, a great um, a great decompression from everything else I have going on. How about you, Marmel? Have you, aside from I don't know if you ever participated in the coloring books, but have you ever? Uh, do you do you have something you retreat to when you need to decompress? I tried the coloring books, but it just wasn't uh, for me. <laughs> but uh, two years ago, I actually attended a soap uh, making uh, workshop. It was you know, because I wanted a new hobby, something very new. So I've never created like a soap in my entire life. I had no idea how to do it. So it was pretty fun. It actually evolved into a small, into a small business. But right now I have someone else creating soaps for me for, um, for my small business. But I still created like for myself and for my family. So it's, it's, a, it's I don't know. Uh, I like the process of, um, you know, it, uh, what do you call this? Um, making up new uh, new soaps, like uh, thinking of new ingredients to to put in. You know, I, I like that ac sort of activity where I have to experiment. Okay, how is this soap going to going uh, going to look like? Like, what if I burn the goat's milk? <laughs> Things like that. So it's it's actually fun for me, and I still do it quite a lot at home. What if I burn the goat's milk is not a question I've ever asked myself, but good to, good to know to watch out for that if I ever take up soap making. <laughs> All right, so that's number one, uh, take up a new hobby or activity. And this is uh, like, I wanna reemphasize, this is something that is really, really, really powerful. I'm um, actually, Marmel, I have a question for you since you brought it up. One thing I've heard people say is that if you have a hobby and you start charging money for it, if you turn it into a business, then all of a sudden it stops becoming relaxing and uh, stops becoming something to retreat to. Have you found that or is it having it, having that delineation between the, the selling part and the making for friends and family part, is, has that helped or, or have you found that? No, I actually didn't feel that just because I have it separated uh, already. So I have the hobby part wherein I just make for my family and, you know, when I gift to my family, family and friends. But for the business part, it never reached a point wherein I thought about, okay, I have to make like 500 bars of soap because I need to meet this quota. It's always been I can do this if I want to and if it's and it's okay if I don't. Because it's just like, a, not even a side hustle because I'm not really hustling. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, um, um, it just evolved into, okay, I made too many bars of soap. So why don't I try selling uh, the rest? All right. So that's number one. Uh, have a hobby or another activity. Pick up a new hobby or activity. Number two is to set up a time to relax. And when we say that, we're not necessarily talking about um, you know, taking the afternoon off or anything like that, though that would be super awesome. Um, more, it could just be like five minutes to yourself. Uh, and this is why the Pomodoro, you know, we haven't really talked about the Pomodoro technique before, uh, but that is a, a perfect, this is a perfect example of almost enforcing that. And Pomodoro technique, we'll have a link if you, know, if you don't know, is to, you set a timer so that you do 25 minutes of focus work and then you take say a five minute break and then it kind of changes over time, but that's the general idea even just taking that five minutes 
to break and recharge yourself and decompress. Some people do some light exercise. Some people walk around. Some people check social media. Um, how, whatever you want to do in that, in that little time, uh, it, it can really help, A, break up your work work sessions, but B, help you get focused and stay focused by, I mean, it sounds counterintuitive, right? Stopping to work uh, can help you work more, uh, have better and more consistent work, uh, but it is, it is uh, the, way, the way it works. Uh, I know for myself, uh, one thing I do is uh, I purposely, this is going to sound, again, kind of weird, but I purposely don't have a huge water bottle at my desk. I have just a, a small mug, which is actually a beer stein, uh, very on brand for me. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, what I, what I'll, and I do it that way because it kind of forces me throughout the day to go upstairs and just take that five minute break to get more water. Uh, and it kind of helps me uh, enforce that. Um, how about you, Marmel? Do you have any examples of, uh, do you do like breaks throughout the day or, or throughout the week or, or how do you structure things? I used to be very bad at taking breaks. Like mm -hmm. I learned the importance of taking a break and actually relaxing when I joined Asia Deficiency like five years ago. I thought you'd have to be sitting on your desk for nine hours or eight hours straight or else people will think you're not being productive or you're lazy. But joining Asian Efficiency, I learned that it's actually the opposite. You need to take a break. So before, I used um, the Pomodoro technique a lot, including the take, you know, taking breaks and just relaxing and just disconnecting for a few minutes. But now, I don't have to think about it anymore. It just happens. Like, I would stand up, I'd go down, and maybe for some of you, you'd find it funny. But every, every day without fail, I'd go because uh, my office is on the second floor. I'd go down and I'd sit at the bottom of the stairs and just wait for the dogs and my cat to approach me and ask for some belly rubs and for and for some pets and for some treats. So that is for me relaxing because you know the energy they give off, you know, from from my pets helps me relax. It makes me smile. By the time I go back up to to my home office i already i already have a smile on my face so that's oh, my yeah. that's my like <laughs> five to ten minute relaxation <laughs> Yeah, I can totally see. Uh, we don't have pets, despite my uh, my kids uh, and my wife's pleading. We currently don't have pets, but I can totally see how that would be, uh, how they would totally be a great break excuse and also a, a recharger. Uh, while I don't have pets, uh, I'm uh, my office is in my basement, and uh, for those watching on the live stream, right to my right, there's a, a, a window that's at eye level. So sometimes when I when I want to take a break, I'll just stand. Uh, I'll just stand up and look out the window, uh, kind of which the ground is kind of at my eye level too. And uh, I remember when the pandemic first started, the, the 2020 pandemic, and people were working from home that weren't used to it. And there was jokes going around that uh, when you first start working from home, you know, you're, you're all into it. Uh, and, but after a few months, you're looking out the window and, and uh, talking to the crows <laughs> and talking to the animals that you see outside every day. <laughs> Uh, I've worked from home for more than a decade, uh, but I'm kind of almost at that point right now where I look out my window, I see the squirrels, uh, I see the robins, uh, all sorts of animals outside, no rats yet, thankfully. Uh, but uh, yeah, it just becomes kind of like a, a little break for me to look outside and see what my animal friends are doing. That's one nice thing about the podcast is uh, you can all slowly hear me cracking up as we go through the, these uh, 331 episodes. <laughs> Um, uh, following along with the live stream, Rob uh, says that during his break, he, uh, he does a Pomodoro. And so what, he does the same thing during that, that Pomodoro, Pomodoro break time. He walks around, he does some squats, he has a cup of coffee. Yeah, that's another thing I do. I'll go up and grab some coffee if I'm still in my coffee drinking phase of the day. Uh, and yeah, it's a great excuse to get up and, and move around. All right, so that's tip number two, set up a time to relax and kind of follows on from that. Tip number three is to get physical. Uh, 
this is something that is also really, really powerful if you're able to work this into your day, into your week, is doing some sort of physical activity. It doesn't have to be anything hardcore. You don't have to go to, you know, you don't have to do like a CrossFit class or something like that uh, if you're able to go to classes where you are. Uh, any sort of movement and exercise. So Rob mentioned that he uh, does the squats, but it could be it could be anything, uh, and and just getting the body moving uh, can um, help the body release uh, mood elevating hormones like endorphins. It just reduces that level of stress. Uh, this is one thing that I. For me, from when I exercise, it's always in the morning, like first thing in the morning after I wake up. Uh, so I don't personally get these kind of decompressing benefits because I'm already waking up. Uh, these, these benefits kind of go on throughout the day. Uh, but I can totally understand the benefits of exercising uh, in midday or even at the end of the day to help you decompress. Um, how about you, Marmel? How do you, I mean, <laughs> it's a little different for you because you're, uh, 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 for those who don't know, uh, the bulk of the Asian efficiency team uh, lives in the Philippines, uh, but works North American hours for the most part. Uh, so uh, your, when we say exercise in the morning and evening, it's a little bit of a different concept for you. Uh, but how do you, do you use exercise to decompress or are you like mainly like the second you're not working, you're under the cover sleeping? How, do, how does that work? <laughs> uh, exercise definitely plays a, a big, a big part um, when it comes to my, to my uh, daily working life, so to speak. So pre-pandemic or bef uh, before COVID, BC, <laughs> uh, I go to the gym the um, middle of my shift so in the philippine time philippine time i actually start working um after lunch i do a bit of work so i would stop and then go to the gym and then come back home and then work again so that was my schedule but now um not all the gyms and the gym that i go to isn't open they actually closed down and they're going to reopen uh, next year so i really didn't have a choice so i still work out um around the same time but only you know at home but only problem is I don't like working alone so I had to force myself so like right now I like in right in front of me I can see two dumbbells <laughs> so anytime uh, you know uh, during my working hours I can just pick it up do weighted squats or, or, or whatever so definitely helps with decompressing within shift or in the middle so sometimes when we're on our huddle or in like a, an ops meeting and you're on mute, is it, are you like, do you have your dumbbells and you're doing weighted squats and stuff like that while, <laughs> no, while no, I'm no. talking? Is that what's happening? <laughs> oh, no, I, I wish, but no, that, that, that's not the, be the best idea to give our listeners. So I have to be focused when we're in a meeting and think of jokes. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah. And there's lots of things you can do. Like I said, get it. Uh, you don't have to be doing weighted squats or anything like that. You could just go for a walk sometimes. Uh, like I have a, a forest right beside our house. And sometimes in, in the midday uh, when the weather is a little better than it is in Vancouver right now, uh, I'll just go for a walk uh, and it's just 15 minutes just to, just to recharge. So uh, anything you, you do, we, we actually have a blog post, five ways for busy, busy people to increase their energy and get things done. Uh, so we'll make sure to link to that. that. That gives some more examples of this. Uh, but however you can do any sort of movement, it can really help you decompress. And the nice thing about it is when you do it, uh, if it's something that does get your heart rate up a little bit, uh, th those benefits carry on throughout the day. It's not just decompressing once you do it. It's something that can carry on uh, and pay off throughout the rest of your day or even your week. All right, so that's tip number three, get physical. Tip number four, uh, for the, obviously this depends on those who have families, uh, but tip number four is to schedule family time. And if you don't live with a family, you don't have immediate family members, maybe this is friend time, maybe this is connecting, uh, connecting online with family members who might not live with you, you know, however, how, whatever this means. But the idea is to intentionally schedule family time uh, and add those to your calendar. And so we talked about this in TPS 235. Uh, we talked about having a, a family calendar and coordinating things with your family and, and um, making sure your family's on the same page. But the, the key time is to make an effort to find ways to spend time together as a family uh, so you can uh, uh, 
And again, depending on your family situation, for many people, just that little bit of family interaction uh, can really recharge you. And I know during the during the early days of the pandemic, when many people were uh, stuck working at home and stuck working at home with family members, uh, with kids maybe that, or, or elderly parents, for example, uh, for something they're not used to, a lot of people found this a challenge, but a lot of people also found it a real benefit uh, to just take five minutes out, go up, uh, see see the kids if they if they are able to uh, to get time away from the kids to work go up and see the kids for you know five ten minutes just play with them go outside throw around a, a baseball or something like that uh, and just that little bit of family interaction throughout the day has really helped people decompress some people have said that that was actually quite a big benefit of the uh, pandemic uh, assuming you're able to sort things out so you're able to work uh, from home, which cannot be, uh, uh, can be difficult for some people. Uh, but even if it's not during working hours, even if it's like at the end of the day, uh, even if you have a super busy schedule, if you can schedule some sort of intentional family time, not just running into each other when you're walking, <laughs> uh, walking out the door, uh, it can have a really big decompression benefit. Um, how about you, Marmel? I know, again, we already established you have kind of a, a, a whacked out schedule, I know. Uh, but uh, do you, are you able to do any sort of intentional family time? Dinner time, because um, there, are, there can be times when a bit, I'm a bit tired and I would want to take a nap during that time. But these days, we really made it to a, a point that dinner time is family time that we have to be together, you know, eating dinner, whether it's at home or we go out, uh, we go out to eat. And weekends are generally for family, like Sunday. Um, if we're not going out, like staying at a resort to decompress. <laughs> so Sunday, Sunday, we always go, We I, like I cook lunch and um, we take it to my in-laws place and we stay there until late afternoon, to spend time with, with, um, with my nephews as well. And then I'll, uh, for dinner, then again, Sunday dinner is, is at home with our little little family. And then Saturday, Saturday night are for friends. <laughs> but Saturday, the entire morning and afternoon, it's for family too. So that's basically what our what our weekly family schedule is like. It's, it's kind of hard to uh, find a time during uh, weekdays. Like um, Bella is, well, she's going to school, but but at home and she ends school at around 5.30 and then she wants us to take a nap after. So we have to work with dinner time and then the weekend. Yeah, uh, I guess that's one benefit of living in the, <laughs> living in the Philippines is uh, uh, sometimes I see pictures of you having your, your family time at a, at a resort. And it's just, I'm just thinking to myself, man, this is what people from North America pay tons of money to fly hours and hours and hours to go experience. And you're like, yeah, let's go to the resort today. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for us, uh, you know, we don't, uh, at the, the time of recording anyway, uh, we aren't able to spend time with external family, like outside of our individual family units, the government, our, per, our local government uh, has restrictions against that. Uh, so we've been spending a lot of time just within, within our family. And one thing we've started to do, which we never used to do, um, we've always been pretty good at eating dinner together. That's always been something that we've done. Uh, but we've, we've gotten it in the last couple months in this habit of watching something together uh, during dinner. And we've kind of rotated uh, being able to pick something to watch. So uh, it was just my young younger son's uh, turn. So we spent a lot of time watching The Legend of Korra, which is a very good show. If, you've ever, if you haven't watched that, it's something that stands up to multiple watches. Uh, but right now it's my wife's turn. So we're watching Our Planet on Netflix. I'm not sure what I'm going to subject them to. Uh, maybe something about financial independence or something. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but it's, it's been really fun, like having this just something to do, uh, to do together uh, before we all go off and do our own thing afterwards. All right, so that's number four, schedule intentional family time, whether that is with your immediate family or with, uh, you know, virtually with uh, extended family, however you are able to do it and whatever your family situation is, could be friends as well. Uh, and number five, we wanted to save this one for last because this is, uh, you know, not many of us are able to do this, uh, but if you are able to pull it off, this is actually the most powerful 
way to decompress, and that is to unplug. Uh, we're not anti-technology. We're not anti-connection. Obviously, we're, we're recording a podcast, so very clearly, uh, we are not uh, anti-internet, anti, uh, anti-online or anything like that. But this 24-7 connectivity can have a real impact on our ability to focus and achieve our goals. A, a popular book by Cal Newport is called Digital Minimalism. He talks about this a lot. He was actually on the podcast, uh, TPS 88. Uh, so way back, he was on the podcast. Uh, and he says the, the, this ir- irresistible attraction to screens is leading people to feel as though they're ceding more and more of their autonomy when it comes to deciding how they direct their attention. And I'm sure all of us have been guilty of this at one time or another uh, you know you have a few minutes you're you have a few minutes in line at the grocery store so out comes the phone to check social media or Instagram or, or you know whatever uh, and a lot of us this happens to and it's very difficult to to get away with it and again we're not saying go back to using a flip phone I mean if you want to go for it uh, but it can be really really helpful to take at least either a partial or a total uh, digital detox um, have you ever done that, Marmel? Have you ever tried like a complete digital detox? Not voluntarily. <laughs> but I, I think this is something that we really need to do. Because um, I remember there's a mountain resort here um, here where, where, where I'm from, where there is no reception. Like your phone is basically useless. Right? But every time we go there, we can really be present, right? like really talk and not even check our phones because we know there is no receptions, receptions, any sort of reception at all. So it's one thing that I want to, I want to do again, because it's good to to just be present and do activities uh, with a family. And this is something that I realized just how important it is because right now Lloyd, my partner, he has a new business. Wherein he has to be constantly on his phone, you know, answering uh, customers because he's just starting. So he needs to build his customer base. And it is irritating me a lot. Like when we're doing grocery shopping and he's constantly on his phone, when I look back, like, where is Lloyd? And he's stuck in some corner answering questions. And I was like, you realize, you know, you need to unplug. And he's like, I cannot. And then goes, then you need to delegate it to somewhere else, right? Because you cannot be present with family and friends or even just for yourself if you don't, right? If you do not disconnect from technology once in a while, even for just a few hours in a day. Yeah, that's something we, we've talked about in the past, especially, but mainly in the context of email. Uh, and that is that a lot of times we think we're not able to unplug and we're pretty sure we're not able to unplug, but we've never actually tested it to see if that's true. Like if I take two hours away from my email, will the world blow up? Um, Maybe, you know, maybe you're, (laughs) maybe you're in a role where it would blow up. Maybe if you were somebody who only checked email once a day, you know, maybe that would be a huge problem. But a lot of people, a lot of us think it's a, a big problem, but we haven't actually uh, tried it to see what happens. And you, you don't have to go cold turkey. You don't have to unplug for a day uh, just to see what happens. You can like unplug for an hour, two hours. You can kind of like build up to it. Um, I know Tan recently uh, did a, it's, uh, you know, I, if he was on the episode, I'd ask him about it. Uh, but he, I know he recently did a 72 hour, I think it was 72 hours, maybe 48 hour unplug where he and some friends uh, went to a, uh, a resort kind of similar to what you were talking about mm-hmm. uh, and did a voluntary uh, complete uh unplugging like no internet uh, i'm not sure if they were not I, I know they took some pictures so i guess they had a camera of some sort but it was like a, an intentional uh detoxing and they all did it together so that they're kind of holding each other accountable so that's an interesting way to do it uh, i had a similar situation where we wanted a family vacation to a place called desolation sound uh kind of close to Vancouver where I live and the place we live same thing no connectivity no wi-fi uh if you go into town you can get it uh so at first it was it was uh 
at first it was very strange and you, you know, you don't, you don't really realize how much you're used to being connected uh, until you don't have it. Uh, I found myself like constantly reaching for my phone and going, Oh, right. You know, <laughs> and uh, you, you have no idea how much this is totally automatic behavior now for many of us. Like it was a shock to me and I like know this stuff, you know, but it's one thing to, to know it um, academically. And it's another thing to actually experience it. How often we just like instinctively reach for our devices. Uh, so it, it was, uh, it, at first it was kind of hard, but it, you know, we did it for a few days uh, and it was, it was really, really nice. And then, you know, when we went into town, I would get my email and stuff like that. So I wasn't uh, like a tan level digital detox, uh, but it was more like once a day versus versus a constant thing. Um, I actually read, this is good timing because I just read this article yesterday called, uh, it's in Wired Magazine, it's called The Glorious Almost Disconnected Boredom of My Walk in Japan. <laughs> and it's about a guy, uh, his name's Craig Maud, who uh, wrote about his six week, 620 mile walk across Japan. Uh, and he very intentionally limited his technology. So Unplugging doesn't necessarily have to mean doing away with all technology. Uh, what he did is he still used his device for um, like Google Maps, for example, uh, to be able to find his way around or to be able to uh, locate a um, you know, something in the place that he was walking to. So he, he didn't not use technology, but he used a tool uh, that we've talked about on the podcast a lot called Freedom, which is a content blocker to block all of, you know, social media, mm -hmm. um, news, like all that sort of stuff. He blocked it off. So he was making a very intentional use of technology. Uh, and I, I thought that was a cool balance of using technology, but not allowing it to be distracted. So however, however you are able to do a detox, whether it's an hour here or there, whether it's a half day, whether it's a day, whether it's more, uh, any, to any level that you're able to schedule some sort of digital unplugging, uh, it can, it'll really, uh, the longer you do it, uh, the more, I guarantee you, the more decompressed you'll feel. Won't be, you won't feel decompressed at first because we're so used to it, but, uh, but the more you do it, the more decompressed you'll feel. All right, so those are our five ways to decompress. There's lots more, but these are five that we found really, really valuable. Number one, pick a new hobby or activity. Number two, set up a time to relax. Number three, get physical. Number four, schedule family time. And number five, unplug. As far as Ash and Sep goes, chances are one of those is gonna jump out to you for something that maybe you haven't tried or you know you should try or you want to try. So pick one of those. If you're not sure where to start, uh, I think I would, I would start with setting up a time to relax. Uh, I'm not sure if you agree with that, Marmel, but uh, I think if you were to pick one to start with that you weren't, if you weren't sure where you wanted to start, just see if you can pick those five minutes here, 10 minutes there, um, half a day here, uh, time to relax and decompress and make it an intentional time, not just whenever you're finding a few moments. Uh, we actually have a, a, in the dojo, which is our online productivity community, uh, which you can go to the productivityshow.com forward slash dojo, we have a mini course called the three levels of productive downtime, where we dig more into ways that you can uh, ways that you can find downtime and decompress. Uh, and if we want to thank all of our members of the TPS Plus, which is our premium version of the podcast. We've had many people joining these last few weeks uh, after the podcast. Uh, you get your episodes a week free, uh, a week early, I should say, and completely ad free. Uh, and if you want to find the show notes to this episode, go to theproductivityshow.com forward slash 331. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. And I hope you find some ability to decompress.